No matter how Russia's war in Ukraine ends, Dr. Yuri Kuznetsov will be battling Vladimir Putin's madness for years. Kuznetsov is a Ukrainian surgeon and a national hero who stayed beside his patients as they were attacked. Now, heroism is a virtue that must endure. His city was liberated, but Dr. Kuznetsov sees victims every week or so, civilians who step on one of the millions of Russian landmines across about a third of Ukraine. There's a massive effort to clear the mines, but that will take a generation or more. Until then, there will be Dr. Kuznetsov with healing hands and eyes that have seen too much. The story will continue in a moment. Half his life he's devoted to Central Hospital, and here in its basement with Putin's bombs overhead, all he'd become in 52 years was laid down in service to his home. We didn't imagine until the end that Russia would attack our country, Dr. Kuznetsov told us. When you're sitting in a basement at night and a plane is flying over you, it was impossible to predict whether you would wake up to see another day. In 2022, the basement became Dr. Kuznetsov's operating room. That's him, dressed in white. The wounded were endless. A close friend's wife he could not save, and this man who was shot and lived. Did you save more patients than you lost? Yeah. We saved significantly more people, definitely. Many of your colleagues evacuated, and you did not. I wonder why you stayed. When you have patients, and you're the only doctor or the only person who can treat them, I, I didn't understand how you could leave. He could not leave Izium. His city of 40,000 was occupied for six months. The Russians laid landmines here as they ran from Ukraine's counterattack. Putin's unprovoked war on an innocent people destroyed 80% of Izium and killed 1,000. Leaving apartment buildings cleaved in two. And this school, built in 1882, a hollow corpse. The people of Izium clothed themselves in liberation, and yet they are not entirely free. Demining teams are still fighting Russia here. Izium, 20 miles from the front, is one of the worst areas for mines and unexploded ordnance. Throughout Ukraine, more than 1,000 civilians have been wounded by mines. Lydia Borova, a 70-year-old widow, was picking mushrooms in a forest. I turned by the tree, and then there was an explosion, she said. I looked down at myself, and I was bleeding. My arm was injured. My leg was injured. I was losing strength. Her right foot and ankle were ripped away. Kuznetsov said, first of all, the most difficult thing is to persuade a patient that their leg needs to be amputated. It's very difficult to explain to them that the leg is no good, no good to use. He told us a prosthetic is ultimately easier to live with. Dr. Kuznetsov saved me, she told us. I didn't realize how much blood I lost. I don't know how I managed to survive. Ihor Bogoraz was with his wife in their garden. They found 12 mines, but there were 13. I decided to mow the weeds, he told us, and one mine was under my foot. I stepped on it, and it exploded instantly. And that's it. No leg. Sergei Nikolaev was walking in leaves from the autumn, 
while uncovering grapevines for the spring. If it had been green, he told us, I would have noticed it. But it was brown. I didn't see it. It blended in with the leaves. I stepped on it, and I knew right away. Kuznetsov said, the majority are those who stepped on petal mines or anti-personnel mines. The person who invented them was an evil genius because they only weigh two ounces, but what they can do when triggered is terrifying. Pedal mines, five inches long, flutter from aircraft by the thousands, like flower petals. Eleven pounds of pressure will set them off. Vasil Solyanik found them on his roof and in his garden. There's 18 here, he told us, but in all there were over 50. He showed us his video. That's a pedal mine right there. They are so common that we were told the story of a 70-year-old woman who gathered them in a basket and took them to a police station. Solyanik told us, there's some left in the bushes over here, so don't walk around there. He dialed 101, and emergency services sent deminers Ivan Shepolev and Ihor Ovcharuk. We encounter every type of munition, Ovcharuk told us. Anti-infantry and anti-tank mines, mortars, artillery shells, rockets, it's all here. At Solvanik's home, a sweep revealed an unexploded cluster bomb. Those are tricky. So they blew it in place. Ivan Shepolev told us as the Russians fled, they also left booby traps. We have seen cases, unfortunately, where explosives were found in civilian homes. Obcharuk said, my team also had to work on removing our dead Ukrainian soldiers whose bodies had been mined. In 2022, Ihor Ocharuk's kneecap was shattered when a fellow deminer stepped on a mine and lost his foot. Shepolev told us, We know every explosive we remove means that someone's life is saved. A few weeks after our visit, a Russian missile wrecked the fire station where they're based. Some were injured, but not Shepolev or Ovcharuk. What is the scope of the mine threat in Ukraine? I think the scope is unrecognizable in modern times. Pete Smith heads demining here for the Halo Trust, a charity founded in 1988 to demine war zones. Smith was 33 years in the British Army and awarded by Queen Elizabeth for disarming an IRA time bomb in a train station. Today, he says, Ukraine is the most heavily mined country. In some areas, the minefields are three or four mines deep. In areas, maybe a dozen mines deep. But that's just the first line of defense. Then several kilometers behind that, there are other layers of, of minefields as well. By identity, I just mean... Smith took us to a farm sown with Russian anti-tank mines. You have to step carefully. Right there, in the center, is a mine packed with 17 pounds of high explosive. With three weeks of training behind her, Yulia Yaroshuk was probing for any tripwire that would detonate a mine near her. She threaded the grass, feeling for the slightest resistance. Only the day before, a Halo D miner was killed and two were wounded in another part of Ukraine. Doing this by hand with that wand, it seems to me that you have an awfully big field to cover. 
She said, well, of course, it'll be a very long process. As far as I know, it'll take many, many years. Each day of war means years of demining. Why do you do this work? I didn't have to do it. I wanted to do it. This is my contribution to victory. Will Ukraine ever be without mines? I think what I have seen in my time in Ukraine is the, is the innovation, uh, the patriotism, and just the sheer will of the people that I'm confident that they will be able to remove the last mine from Ukraine. Does this war make any sense to you? <laughs> Not to a single person here or anywhere, Sergei Nikolaev said. What kind of mind, what kind of moron or idiot do you have to be to even wish something like this on your enemies? You can't. Even now, someone could drop a fork or a spoon and it makes a loud noise, and in your soul you feel pain and bitterness and fear. It's a real horror. My sister-in-law was ripped apart by a mine in front of her children. In front of their eyes. Of all of Vladimir Putin's war crimes in Ukraine, one was the bombing of Izium's central hospital. Kuznetsov told us, after this part of the hospital was damaged, a lot of medical services simply became unavailable. Here, we had both intensive care and three operating rooms. When Yuri Kuznetsov was 14 years old, his grandmother died in his arms. He told us that's why he became a doctor. And we suspect that's why he stayed through the bombardment and occupation and the battle of the mines. When a town loses its hospital, it doesn't just lose the medical care, it loses hope. The best praise for me was when a woman told me in April 2022 that when we heard the hospital was still open, we realized that our town had hope. It could withstand, survive, and have a future. The future of Ukraine will demand devotion and heroic patience. On this day, Yulia Yaroshuk slowly teased out one Russian mine, with millions more receding from its edge. <laughs>